Hello everyone, welcome to IP Plus Academy for Civil Services. It's a video on daily news and editorial analysis, which I'll be covering from the Hindu and Indian Express. The important news and editorial that would be relevant for the preparation of civil services examination will be discussed in this session. Let's get started with the news topic list. Today is 28th of July, the first important news that is Centre may extend PLI schemes to chemical and petrochemicals. We have seen that post-COVID PLI scheme has become a boon for India. Many important sectors has been included under the production link incentive scheme. Second, that is Raj Sabha passes Cinematography Amendment Bill 2023, something very important to curb the part of piracy which is there in the cinema industries. Third, that is manufacturing of more Bande Bharat coaches to ensure that these coaches are further increase in the Indian railways. Second last, that is parliamentary panel concerns over the PWD population data. There is no concrete and part of the depository of the data that is there with regards to the welfare for the physically disabled people. And the last is an editorial that is waiting is on, on the National Research Foundation. Apart from the news and editorial discussion, at the end of this video, there will be MCQ based questions. These questions will be based on current affairs that will help you for the upcoming prelims examination. So without any further ado, let's get started. And if you're new to our channel, do not forget to subscribe Apti Plus Academy for Civil Services on YouTube. If you like this video, if you find this video informative and helpful, do hit that like button. Starting the session with the first news, that is Center may extend the PLI schemes to petrochemicals and chemicals, something important for general studies paper 2, that is the government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from it design and implementation. And this particular news is also important for your general studies paper 3, where Indian economy and issues related to it is mentioned in the syllabus under paper 3. So the government is considering to implement the part of PLI scheme. This is production link incentive scheme for chemicals as well as for the petrochemicals. So these will be the two new part of the horizon or the vertical that government is looking forward with the PLI. And government aims to increase the part of the dependency on energy sector by 2047 and even will be achieving the net zero emissions by 2070. So these things are aligned with the target that government has actually envisioned for and this will help to achieve the target. India, the main priority is on the green growth and each sector will need to contribute for part of lowering the carbon intensity. Now from here you can be asked a question in the mains examination that what are the attributes or what are the components that can help India to achieve the net zero emissions by 2070. So you can highlight different sector contributing in this. Now, moving ahead, the government has been focusing on the part of the PLI scheme, specifically in various sectors. One of the most dominant is manufacturing sector. This aims to boost the overall productivity of the Indian industries. Now, background in February 2022, the Ministry of Chemical and Fertilizers has brought up the PLI schemes for the chemical sector to boost the domestic manufacturing and export. Now, the effort was made as a part of India's larger goal for becoming self-reliance. And government announced that the opening of PLI bits to produce 20 gigawatt hour of advanced chemistry cells. Now, if you look at the part, 2.19 billion has been planned to designate and increase the domestic battery cell productions in the country. Now there is a particularly a specialty chemical. This is also known as PSC. So Ministry of Finance has emphasized that there is a need to boost the part of the domestic productions of chemicals, particularly specialist chemical that include the pharmaceutical ingredient, this say API. And we are mostly importing the part of API from China, right? So China is a country from which India import the most API dyes and pigment. Now we want to cut it short. We want to reduce our import so that our part of the forest reserve is also conserved. Now speciality uh, chemicals this account for nearly 22% of India's chemical and petrochemical industries. However, it contribute more than half or 
the India's total export of the chemical and petrochemical. So these are some of the data that can be directly utilized in the mains paper. Make sure you are taking a note of this. Now brief about the PLI scheme. I think most of you must be aware of the fact and how does the PLI actually has been encapsulated. So PLI this was launched in April 2020 in order to provide support manufacturing for the select sector. So far, the scheme has been extended to 14 sector. So categorically, this will be, uh, you know, as of now, it is 14 sector. But after the inclusion, these two sector will be added and further government will increase it. Right. So total outlay was 1.97 lakh crore rupees, which is 26 billion rupees and telecommunications. Electronics, white goods, textile, pharmaceuticals are among the key sector that has been extended under the production link incentive schemes. Now moving ahead, Raj Sabha passes Cinematograph Amendment Bill 2023, something important for general studies paper 2. That is the government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementations. So Rajya Sabha. Uh, has recently passed the Cinematograph Amendment Bill to amend the Cinematograph Act of 1952. So till now, this is the act upon which the things were regulated, the part of regulations and the provisions that is there were regulated under the Cinematography Act of 1952. The amended bill introduced stringent anti-piracy provisions, which has been long demanded by the industry. So this is the one of the key and prominent feature. Apart from stringent piracy provision, there is extending the part of scope for law and censorships to cover the copyright also. So this is the main aim behind that. I'll make you understand the other aim also, but this is also the significant part of it. Now some important provisions, this is something which will be helping you in the mains examination per se. For mains plus prelims, you can use this. So the bill intent to ensure the film industry's content does not suffer due to piracy and the menace that caused heavy loss to the industry, right? To a larger extent, even uh, from the ethics or case studies point of view, a general studies paper 4 ki baat kare, aap se is pe bhi sawal puche ja sakte and even you can utilize this uh, bill as an example in your part of the ethics paper. The bill proposes the jail term for three years and a fine up to 5% of the film production's cost from a person using audiovisual recording device in place of a license or exhibit film and intentions to make any transmission or affinity copy film or trying to do so. This will be a complete strict procedures and rules that has come up from the government that making it a legal backing, right? So the bill amend the Cinematography Act of 1952, which authorized the Central Board of Certification, this is CB, FCB, this is the body which take care for the part of certification, will require to cut the film and clear the exhibitions in cinemas and television. Now, government ki paas uske upar supersedary power hoki, and they have the prerogative that ye uske powers ke uske ruling ko bhi revise kar sakte. So, whole soul the central government is the highest authority to take that decision. The prohibitions of unauthorized recording of the films, that is again uh, something that has been included. This has been completely made prohibited. The bill further seeks to introduce the new section in the Cinematography Act to prohibit the unauthorized recordings under Section 6AA and their exhibition under 6AP. So these are some of the sections. If you remember, it's well and good. If you don't exam, if you're not able to recall it, it does not matter a lot. Now the provision 6 AA prohibit the recording of any part of the film for the sole uses of the same device the report further have mentioned about this details. Now there's certain part that has also been included about the age rating and criteria. The bill introduced three age category which was also there but it has made things more in a redefined manner. So like film which is uh, under rating but has been split under US 7 plus, 13 plus and 16 plus. So these are the three categories. The first is 7, 13 and 16 plus, right? The film rated adult has largely been prohibited on televisions following the 2004 Bombay High Court order. If you want to elaborate, you can check this particular order. You'll get in the Google. Broadcaster often cut the film voluntary and reapply the CBFC certifications 
for the UA rating, the bill formalize this practice. Now moving ahead, manufacturing of more Bande Bharat coaches, something important for gender studies paper 3, that is infrastructure, energy, ports, roads, airport, railways, etc. So this is basically with regards to the overall infrastructure development and even enhancing the part of transportation in our country. Uh, Indian Railway have prepared to overhaul the fleet completely by introducing 8,000 more Bande Bharat coaches, right? This will be manufactured over few years. Although uh, the part Indian Railway is doing by the introduction of Bande Bharat is commendable, one thing that is there concerning the citizen, the price. You know, price is pretty on a higher side. Although it is justified the way of the quality it has been provided, but even if government uh, is able to reconsider on the part of fair, this will be more economical to people. Now, usi ko dhyan mein rakhte hue is particular train mein kuch aur changes ki baat ki gayi hai, like slipper coaches will be there. I'll discuss that in a while. Now, Indian Railway plan to induct more semi-high speed train in the transit. Vande Bharat Express train set typically 16 coaches hoti hai total, but depending upon the route, abhi India mein ise 8 coaches ke saath operate ki ja rahi. Now, what is the roadmap for Indian Railways as this 8,000 coaches will be prepared under the prevailing model of manufacturing maintenance contract. The coach production program was approved by the Ministry of Railway or 16 coach transit will be typically costing around 130 crore rupees a single train. Now, the provision of new slipper variant, something very, very important specifically for those people who are not able to afford the higher variant because if you look at it, basically in Bande Bharat Express, right, we have seen that there is only chair car and economic class which is pretty on the higher side. Now, introductions of sleeper class will help people to even get quality service and reach out in a destination in a particular time. The integrated coach factory which is there at Chennai, this is manufacturing the entire, this is called the birthplace of Bande Bharat, which has an authorized tender for 3,200 Bande Bharat coaches, right? Uske alave, jo coaches hai, that has to be built up by 2024. At present, all Bande Bharat trains are sitting variant. As I've told you, they're either EE or EC or CC, right? So these are the two variants that is operational as of now. Now, 1,600 coaches will be made at ICF and other productions will be there at MCF Rai Bareli and RCF Kapurthala which will made 800 more coaches. So there has been distribution, but the maximum part will be done at Chennai, that is ISF Chennai. The plan is to roll out the train every year by 20 to 30 first. And even the rollout of the Bande Bharat sleeper train will be by end of the year. That is early 2024 may start. The the parliamentary panel concerns over PWD population's data, something important for gender studies paper 2, that is the welfare schemes for the vulnerable section of the population by the centre and the state government. So the parliamentary standing committee on social justice and empowerment has pulled up the parliamentary standing committee on social justice and empowerment for failing to accurately estimate the part of person with disability. Now there is a paucity of data. And even the data, if not there, the policy making will definitely be impacted. So it is required. The data must be there to ensure a policy making. The government says that the data on PWDs, that a person with disabilities, are largely taken from the census and NSS sample survey. The Department of Empowerment of the Person Disability went on to explain how government has introduced measures to provide unique disability IDs or jo cover ki jati hai schemes but again if there is no repository of the data it would not be feasible for the government and even for specific entities NGOs and other stakeholders to come up with the policies now need for correct estimate if you see the part of uh, the government it has recommended that uh, the house panel has actually recommended that they need to have uh, the census which has been made available every year jo resources have se collect ki ja sakti hai, and the data can be collected there. This includes the collaboration from the state government using the data survey conducting the consultation expert sensitivity of the survey by the Ministry of Statics. Now moving ahead with the editorial of the day that is weighing 
and on the National Research Foundation Bill, something important for gender studies paper too. That is the national uh, government policies and intervention for the development of various sectors and issues arising from a design and implementation. I have also made a discussion about the National Research Foundation in our video, right? So if you have watched news and focus video, you must have uh, got it point. If you're not, do check it out. Aapko playlist mein, NIF research video mein, jo news and focus ki video hai. This is a short video, you'll find it. Now we'll understand this in detail from the editorial point of view and from the mains examination perspective. So what is under this uh, editorial? First talking about the theme and focus. This is about the National Research Foundation Bill. We'll look into the part for NRF, the financial outlay that has been there and some challenges with regards to this, the initial budget outlay and the way forward. A union cabinet recently National Research Foundation Bill ko pass kiya tha. This is uh, after the pass it has created a debate about science and technology funding into the spotlight. Now after the passage of the bill, National Research Foundation will be an apex body that will super head the part of research and development in the country and it will foster a culture of innovation, nurture research ecosystem across all university and colleges in the country. Now, Bill ne jo purani bodies hain ya fir jo agencies thi like science and engineering research board ko replace kiya hai which actually work under the department of science and technology and they were taking most of the decision. Now, this will be replaced by the National Research Foundation. Now, about NRF, something brief that is again relevant for both prelims and mains examination specifically prelims mein sawal puchi ja sakte hain aapse. It was established as per one of the recommendations by the National Education Policy 2020 and it intended accordingly to have an agency with researcher with the various government bodies, industries, thus bringing industry into the mainstream research. The addition of providing research, granting for the individual, NRF ne kuch important cheejo ko facilitate karne ki baat ki hai for Indian universities, specifically state universities ko bhi incorporate ki gai hai. Funding, infrastructure and research all thing will be given a due importance and priority. The idea is to establish NRF as an independent foundation to promote fund research that was mooted by the Kasturi Rangarajan committee in 2019 and they have adopted it according to the National Education Policy 2020. Now financial outlay ki agar baat kare, Kasturi Rangarajan committee ne bhi financial outlay ki baat ki thi initially 20,000 crore rupees ki. And if you look at the part, agar investment ki baat kare, research and development mein, India has a very low share. Uh, when we have a close to 0.65% of the GDP, United States ki agar baat kare, 2.8%, China is investing 2.1%, Israel 4.3% and 4.2% for South Korea. Agar aap baat kare, Israel ki, uh, you have come across the part of the news, NSO ne kuch uh, no, spying ke liye uh, banaya hua hai. So these are the part they actually are investing through the part and even their science and technology is on a pretty higher side. It has expressed the concern over the research and innovation spending that has led to 0.84% from 0.69%. So the software that NSO has actually made is Pegasus, right? I think most of you must be aware of that. Now NEP has adopted the idea but without any specific financial commitment. Initial budget outlay ki agar baat kare, 10,000 crore rupees rakhi gai hai, which will be further augmented to 50,000 crore and the details are available in public domains but budgetary support is pretty less. Government need to ensure that these industries, private philanthropy resources and the part of state and other institutions of national importance should be adequately funded so that the research activities are not impacted. Now, way forward, ki baat kare, the critical part of research and knowledge creation is important for funding. So funding has become a challenge in this context because we need an adequate fund to oh, set a roadmap for India to overcome the part of challenges that India is facing. And national education policies, ki baat kare, 2020, this has argued that the robust research ecosystem is important for the growing challenges and even to look at the part of the world opportunity that is there in the technological advancement. And there's a need for adequate research foundation financial support to ensure research and knowledge creation, right? So if financial problem are taken care by the government, definitely India will excel and India has the just to excel in science and technology and other research activities. 
Now moving ahead with the MCQ questions of the day, before I proceed just to tell you the answers of yesterday questions. For first question, the correct option was A. For second question, the correct option was A. Today's MCQ for practice, you have to tell you about the digital currency of Central Bank. Batana. It's a legal tender or not. Wholesale digital currency was designed for restricted access to the financial institution. Do check out for the correct option. Second is about the International Conference for Election Management Board. It was hosted by the Ministry of Statics Program Implementation. It was held under the aegis of United Nations Summit for Democracy Platform. So do check out for the correct option. Practicing a lot more current affairs question will give you an edge in the real examination. This was all about for the daily news and editorial analysis followed by the MCQ questions. If you have any other concern, you can reach out to us. I'll be more than happy to assist you. For time being, I'm signing off. Thank you so much for watching this video.